We're back out here once again, and with the ever-changing conditions that fall bass fishing presents, what are some of the things that we can do to keep those bites coming when those bass start to get finicky? Well, I've got a presentation for you today that just might answer a lot of those questions. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. So we've had some nice fish today. Put some nice fish in the boat. Oh, that's a good one. Come on, you're not running at me. Oh, that's another one. Oh, that's a good one. That's the biggest one of the day. Whoa, he's got some fight to him. Whoa, and he ran right at me too, and I had to do everything I could to catch up to him. Come here, you. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Now before we get started, I'd like to invite everyone to head on over to my jig store over at diamondbackbaits.myshopify.com. We've got a bunch of jigs that are handmade by yours truly. We've done everything we can to keep the prices as low as possible. I think you're really going to like them. And thank you so much to everyone who's already purchased your jigs. Your support means the world to me. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And if there's one constant that we as bass anglers can depend on during the fall months, it's that conditions are going to change every time we head out to the water. We can have days where it's cloudy, days where it's windy, or days where it's bluebird skies. But even when it's bluebird skies, some days it might be hot, like it is here today in the 90s, or we can have really cold temperatures down into the 40s. All of that affects the bass. It affects not only where they set up, how they set up, but their activity level. So we as anglers need to change our approach. Now, for me, fall fishing is when that finesse fishing really starts to take hold. During the summertime, we're burning cranks, we're working a lot more active moving baits, spinner baits, bladed jigs, and whatnot. But as those waters cool down, the baits slow down, at least for me, and that's what becomes more effective. Now, when I went out to the water the other day, it was bluebird skies like this, and it was hot, and we'd had several days of that. And you would think those bass they would enjoy that. It would put them up toward the shallows like we've talked about, and they would be basking in that sun. But when you've had three or four or five days of that in a row, then you start to get those late spring, summertime conditions, at least in this area. Other areas may have the exact opposite, where you have a warm day and then you get a cold blast that comes through. This applies to that as well, because what it does is, is it causes those bass to go from being more active to being less active. You get several days of nice warm weather, well, it can cause those bass to actually pull back off the bank just a little bit. Now, they're still in the area, but they're just kind of pulled back off the bank just a little bit, and they may be just a bit more finicky. And I found this year that top water bite has been non-existent, which is strange. Usually by this time of the year, I'm throwing top water more than anything else. I've got a head and spook tied on, I've got a Yozuri walking bait tied on, and I'm catching tons of bass. But not so this year. So every year is its own thing, and we need to look at it like that. So as I headed out to the water, and I drove all the way up to the lake because I found that I actually had to take my little boat for a two, three mile run just to find some good fishable water. It wasn't too far from the bank. I was still in about six feet of water, but those bass, they were still feeling kind of sluggish. So obviously I had to start with a Waco rig. This is just a watermelon red flake yum dinger with that 16th ounce nail weight, that tungsten nail weight that I have pushed down into that egg sack on that light wire hook. And it didn't take long, a couple of casts in, and I was able to catch a really nice fish. And this is, I don't know, six feet, six to eight feet of water here, so it's still relatively shallow. Oh, that's a good one. Wow, that's a good fish right there. 
Wow, he hit it like a ton. I love it. Come on, stay down. There we go. First fish of the day. The Waco rig doing work. That's a good bass right there. Oh boy, he's he's digging. He's digging. He's not ready to come out of the water yet. Oh boy, he's he's fighting. Come on, buddy. Look at you can see how clear that water is. All right, come on, dude. I got you. Yeah, game's over. Game's over. Come on. Game is over. I got you. Look at that gorgeous thing. Not quite two pounds. Pound and three quarters. So, changed up the leader. And that's what we got. You are going on the Instagrammies, kid. Your happy butt is going on the Grammy Gram. Here we go. All right, thank you, buddy. Sure do appreciate you. Awesome, awesome fish, awesome catch. They are very cold. Oh, there he went. All right, let's go get another one. All right, started the day off with a Waco rig. Nothing surprising there. It's what lowbrow fishes. But believe it or not, even that Waco rig kind of shut down. That was the only bass that I got on that particular bait. And about a half an hour later, I figured, all right, let's try something different. Let's put on the old thinking cap and let's try something different. And I went with a presentation that I really like from the bank, especially in colder weather. And that is, well, the good old lowbrow rig, right? This is just a bitsy flip jig. I've taken the skirt off of it and I put a small three and a half inch. This is a Rapala Crush City Mayor in that green pumpkin magic color. These things are great. I love these things. Might be my new favorite swim bait. You know, they're not especially soft, right? They kind of stand up a little bit, but they've got a really good kick and they've got a really good belly roll in the water. They've got some really good action. And best of all, I've been catching loads of fish with them. So that right there is the deciding factor. Am I, am I catching fish with them? If I'm catching fish with them, then I have to continue using them. But this little guy right here, I decided I was going to downsize. Now, originally, I had gone to the three and a half inch, those smaller size swim baits, because I was using them with a beetle spin connection on those colder, windier days. And I was having great success. But I just went with the straight jig. Now, a regular swim jig head, a regular quarter ounce or eighth ounce swim bait head will work just fine. But because I have so much grass in my fishery, so much hydrilla, so much milfoil and vegetation, I've got to use something that accounts for that so I can come right through that grass. That's got that line tie in line with the hook, which is great. That teardrop head slips right through the vegetation. And of course, that good brush guard that's what protects the hook and like i said i decided that i was going to try that see if i can slow roll that through the water and see what the fish thought about that well it didn't take long and this was the result I got a piece of gunk. No, that's a fish. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh, yeah, come here, buddy. That's a really good fish. The way he hit it was kind of funky. Uh-uh, uh -uh, you're not sticking me. He hit it real funky-like. But, you know. Old lowbrow rig doing work, right? Right at about a pound and a quarter, pushing a pound and a half. Another gorgeous bass, another beautiful bass. We sure do appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much. And there he went. A great fish. So maybe I was on to something. Maybe those bass wanted to chase something small, something subtle, something finessey, but not as finessey as a Waco rig or a wacky rig. They wanted that bait to move like a little minnow. They might have been chasing or busting on shad. 
Again, I wasn't seeing a lot of activity out on the water. I didn't see busting shad. I didn't see a lot of activity from those bass, but I knew they were there. I knew they were there. And after catching that fish, that confirmed my hunch. But the best part is, is on the very next cast, I was able to land into another nice fish. Kind of doing a good drift here. So we've had some nice fish today. Put some nice fish in the boat. Oh, that's a good one. Come on, you're not running at me. Oh, that's another one. Oh, that's a good one. That's the biggest one of the day. Whoa, he's got some fight to him. Whoa, and he ran right at me too, and I had to do everything I could to catch up to him. Come here, you. Look at that. Look at that fat belly on that guy. Look at the fat belly on that guy. Wow. And he hit it like it owed him money. I got him all kinds of ways. You are not going anywhere, buddy. He hit it and then tried to run at me. So the lowbrow rig doing work again. And that's what they want, that little that little crush city little thing. He's a little bit bigger than the last one. He's, I don't know, pound and a half. Got a nice fat belly on him, all tummied up. Again, nice little bass, about a pound and a half. There he went, all right. Let's see if we can't get another one. I gotta fix up my bait. They've been tearing up this old lowbrow rig, I tell you what. And that's pretty much how the day went from there. I just used this little Rapala Crush City. This is the mayor, and this is in that green pumpkin magic color, just to see if it was this bait or if it was the entire presentation. I went with a couple of different types of trailers. I changed to a more gizzard shad mayor, Crush City mayor, when I put it on there, and I didn't get any bites on that one. But I also changed things up to a 3.75 inch Rage Swimmer in a white colored like a straight shad colored or a straight shiner colored bait and I was able to catch a fish on that but for the vast majority of the day they were keying in on this particular fish on this particular bait color and this particular size and they were hitting it all day long so that's the type of mood those bass were in and I was just slow rolling it I was just working it very easily through that water as a matter of fact, let's go out on the water and I'll show you just exactly what I was doing. All right, well, just fishing this thing. I'm fishing it in shallow water and I'm not going very fast with it. I'm fishing it fast enough that I stay on top of that hydrilla. I stay over the top of that hydrilla. I want to take the tops of that vegetation and just kind of nice and slow, a little bit of variation in the crank. That's all I'm doing. You see all that vegetation that's down there? All that submergent vegetation? I'm going to cast it out there pretty far. I don't want it to sink a lot because this isn't very deep through here. Just a few feet. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just cranking it like that nice and slow. I want to keep my rod tip kind of up where I can work through that vegetation if I do feel it. I can just easily come right through it. And it's easy. That's, you know, that's how I'm fishing this old lowbrow rig. And we've had great success on it today. We've caught, I don't know how many fish I've caught with just this, this particular one. I think I've caught four with just that one swim bait. So I'm liking those Crush City uh, mayors. I like those. But you can do it with any small swim bait. That's the key is just use a small swim bait, little three inch, three and a quarter inch. And oops, oops, there he is. Come on, dude. He was following it back in right there. He almost ate it and then he saw me. And he decided not to. I almost had another bite. But that's what's working. Let's see if I can get another one to do that. But it wasn't huge. Is a nice little fish, would have been nice to add to it. We've caught a lot of them today, just doing this right here. 
you work this on your lake, I'm telling you, you'll have a good time. You'll catch a lot of fish. It's really, really easy. So super simple, right? Super easy. I'm just using a straight spinner combo. I've got a seven foot, but I'm using a medium heavy rod. That's my swim bait setup. But I've got a regular, just 300 size spinning combo. It's one of those cheap loose ones. I, I think I paid $50 for it. I've had it for a few years. Works great for this type of technique. And just slow crank it through there. I'm keeping my rod tip up just a little bit and I'm going very slowly. I'm not going super fast. I want that bait to kind of ride down in a little bit of the water. Again, this is one of those types of presentations where how fast we retrieve it depends on how high or low it is in that water column. And I was fishing at most eight feet of water. It might work in some deeper water, 10, 12 feet, who knows? But in my fishery, that's where it was working. It was working great from those areas, which means it would work amazingly well from the bank. And the Lobro rig always worked great from the bank. It's always one of my favorite cold weather presentations as we get into the winter. Those bass were feeling a little finicky. They weren't ready to commit to something fast, but they wanted something that was moving just a little bit, something that looked like an actual bait fish. And the lowbrow rig was just the deal, and it gave me exactly the results that I wanted. So there you have it. That little swim bait, that small little three and a half inch swim bait did wonders for me when those bass didn't want to bite anything else. It gave them the moving presentation that they were looking for, that realistic presentation they were looking for, without being too loud. It was very realistic and very subtle. And those bass tore it up. Give it a try. I'm sure you'll like the results. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.